G'day guys, Fitcho here, and welcome to the start of a brand new series. Now, today we've jumped back on to Dirt 4, the official game of the World Rallycross Championship, which right now is one of, if not my favorite series in the entire motorsport world. I just cannot get enough of World RX. It's short, fast, action-packed, and seriously chaotic, and I just love it so, so much, and I wanted to share that love here through my YouTube channel, so we're doing a little bit of a series back on Dirt 4. Now, while this game is officially licensed for World RX, it's not quite like a Codemaster F1 game, for example, where it's the sole focus of the actual game. There's a lot of other aspects of Dirt 4 apart from the World Rallycross part, so that means the World Rallycross part isn't that complete. For example, we only have five of the 12 tracks on the real life calendar. That said, I've picked a very nice selection of five from the 12. We've got Montalegre, Lydon Hill, Hell, Hurliers, and Lowiak, probably my five favorite on the, the actual real life calendar. Now, the way this series is going to work, I have purchased the cheapest World Directs supercar that there is in the game, which is the DS3. As you can see, they're painted nicely in my Fitcho racing colors, green and red, of course, to go with the rest of the channel. And each season, which is only going to be five rounds, we're going to try, if we do well enough, to upgrade to the next cheapest car and go through all the cars until we eventually get to the quickest, most expensive car on the game and hopefully win the championship. But ultimately, we just want to get out on track and have a whole lot of fun because that is what Rallycross is all about. Have a have some good battles, a bit of rubbing, a bit of racing, all that good stuff that comes with Rallycross. Now, if you guys are new to Rallycross, just watch this video. I'll try to explain things as it goes because it is a bit different to most forms of racing and the way the whole event works. And also, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you do subscribe with notifications on so you know when every episode of this series comes out. But nonetheless, let's head to Portugal for the first round of the season in Montalegre. Also quickly, for those that are interested, we're going on the hardest AI difficulty with absolutely no exists, except for automatic windscreen wipers, because I can't be bothered mapping a button for that. So, this is the Montalegre circuit in Portugal. It is one kilometer in length and a mixture of asphalt and dirt. And as you can see, at the top of the circuit, there is a little bit of a green lap, a bit of an extra bit, and that is the joke lap. And pretty much every race, you have to take that only one time. Every other lap, you take the normal circuit, but at one stage during the race, you have to take the longer lap. So it is time for the first of four qualifying heats. Now, the way this works is all 16 drivers are split into four races of four. In my race, we have Rene Munich, Markland, and Shishrit. Now, while I am racing against those three on the track, I am competing against every other driver on the clock. Where you actually finish on track within your race is irrelevant. In these heats, it is all up to the clock. And at the end of the first round of qualifying, everyone's times are stacked against each other, and the fastest driver will win at that qualifying heat. Stay Here we go, it is time for the first qualifying heat where you're on the line, four abreast. Grab the handbrake, get the revs up, we're ready to race now. And we're green in Montalegre. I'm not sure how our start has been. Shishirit is forcing us into the dirt. And I'm just going to send it straight down into the Joker here on lap number one. It's caught on the outside. I was going to struggle going in to turn one with the rest of them. So let's get that Joker out of the way and then catch back up to them while those guys are squabbling. Now I have, oh, I have found, I was testing all the cars. The Citroen, the DS3 here is probably the hardest car to control. So this first season, these first five rounds are going to be interesting. But as you can see, taking that early Joker is going to work quite nicely for us, hopefully all things get, ooh, careful the wall, considering where we did start, but we do have a lot of dirt in our face, hopefully some of these guys do jump into the Joker, but we're never going to get any clean air, we would have been fighting with these guys if we didn't Joker, and we are now right on the back of Rene Munich, onto lap number two, can we just send it up his inside down into this left-hander, yes we can. Oh my lord, Markland has just taken off over that curb into the side of Shishirit. These guys are fighting very, very hard. Markland pushing Shishirit right. We're trying to capitalize on that. Can we get across to the apex at the second last corner? Yes, we can. We're the only car to have Joker and Markland is struggling. We're just going to go up his inside. An action-packed first heat. We are now into the lead and something is really not sounding right on the right hand side of our car possibly a puncture sounds like possibly we're riding on the rim but it doesn't feel that bad i don't know i'm just going to keep driving for the rest of this heat and just try to put in the best time i possibly can 
And across the line in first place, a time of 232.4. I'm not too sure where that puts us against all the others. We did get caught up in traffic in the early phase of that race. And we are actually first in the heat results by four seconds as well. Bloody hell, that is a good start. Beating Petter Solberg and Johan Christofferson by four seconds there to take Q1. So after each qualifying heat, everyone gets qualifying points. The winner of each heat gets 50, second place 45, and you can see all the way down. Now it's important to note these qualifying points have no effect on the championship. No championship points are given until we get through all four qualifying heats. So as we won Q1, we are put on pole position in race number A for heat number two. And that means we are in the quickest race of them all against Petter Solberg, Johan Christofferson, and Rene Munich. This is going to be a very interesting heat. Time for heat number two. And as we did win Q1, we are starting on pole position here on the inside of the four abreast starts. We just want to get a decent launch and get down to turn number one first. We are ready to race. And we are green off the handbrake and up through the gears. World RX cars have absolutely bonkers accelerations. Now we're going to jump onto the brakes, try it to take turn number one. Oh, we're going in very deep. We've gone in very deep. That is not what we want. We're getting pushed wide up onto the curb, I think by someone. But we do get down and we're now in the lead of this heat. So the strategy from here is just don't let anyone pass us. Get our head down and put in as many quick laps as we can while we are in clean air. And then head to the joke on the very last lap. Oh, we are getting a hit from Johan Christofferson right behind us. The world champion is getting a little bit impatient there. I feel like I'm driving reasonably well so far, but clearly not quite quick enough for Johan's liking. Right, across the line to start the final lap, we have to head into the Joker right now. And we still have Johan Christofferson right behind us down into the Joker, control the car nicely, a little dab of the brakes to get the nose turned in there, and we get back out in the lead of our heat, which theoretically, ooh, should be the quickest as we're getting a little bit too much, ooh, there's Christofferson, ooh, this is getting messy, he tried to capitalize on our mistake, and now we're going side by side, and Johan has capitalized on our mistake and gotten past us, and we are not close enough to send one up the inside. I accidentally shifted down into second gear. I do believe that's one of one thing I don't like about this car. Is it's really hard to read what gear you're in and that has cost me big time right at the end losing out to Christofferson. This thing's got a little bit messy and exciting there. And we, we still end up third overall. So all in all, that is not too bad with Kevin Erickson actually splitting me and Christofferson. So after the first two qualifying heats, I am still sitting in P1. However, I'm equal on heat points with Christofferson on 92 apiece. With Petter Solberg sitting there in third on 82. So heat number three, I'm with Christofferson, Eriks, and Shishrit, but I'm starting in third. So it's a bit of an interesting place to start. Oh, of course, it's a four abreast start. So I've got cars on either side of me. I'm not too sure what my strategy is going to be in this race. Here we go, heat number three, starting in third place. I'm not too sure what to do here. If I was right on the outside, I'd be diving straight down into the Joker. I'm not sure what to do. I guess we'll see how this goes. We are ready to race. And we are green as not being the best start from myself as we are dropping right down to last. Christofferson is pushing me across and fuck this. I am going down into the Joker. I've got a decent line down. Oh, I've backed it in. I have backed that in so, so badly. Going so late on the brakes and Kevin Erickson has made the most of that. That got very, very interesting. Christofferson pushing me across, trying to get in behind Kevin Erickson. Then I have Shisha it to my left who I ended up having to force into the gravel from Christofferson, but now we are not in the best position. We are in last. We aren't the first car on track to have jokered. We're just going to have to get our head down and make do with our predicament. This car is handling quite strange at the moment. I'm struggling to get a feel for it. It is one of the more crazy of the supercars we do have available to us. I am struggling a little bit to keep this beast under control. Oh, 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 okay, I've turned way too early into the third last corner. I was getting a bit lost in all the dust being kicked up by Shishrit, who was going very, very slowly in the Countryman, and he is going into the Joker, I do believe. And it looks like Christofferson's pulled out enough of a lead at saying, I'm going to finish this race in third place once he does dive into the Joker. 
Oh, Kevin Erickson's going a little bit slowly down into turn number one. I thought, oh, he's going very, oh, I'm getting a bit loose on the curb. He is definitely going quite slowly towards the end of this heat, but I'm struggling right in behind him. I think the chance to get past him is gone. He was struggling on the tarmac section, but he seems to have found his speed once we've gotten back on to the gravel and that is going to bring us to the end of qualifying number three just keep it out of the barriers as we do get to the end of this lap i lost track of what gear i was in again and i wasn't in the right gear i was in second instead of third through those final few corners and that's cost us a little bit more time it's one of the things i don't like about this car and we only get seventh in q3 things really did not go the way we hoped they would go christopherson has topped Q3, he did just get out in front and just put his head down. It's exactly what you want to do in qualifying. Rene Munich, backward. And then you got the two Hansen separated by Ericsson just in front of us. And myself in seventh. But we are ahead of Peter Solberg. So we should still be in a decent position overall. Yet yeah, we've just dropped in behind Christofferson, But we're still second on track for pole position in the semis. So for the final race of qualifying, we're with Kevin Erickson, Kevin Hansen and Peter Solberg. This should be an interesting race. It looks like we're starting third yet again and things didn't quite go how we wanted when we started third in the last race. We'll have to reassess and see how things go as we head down to turn number one. You really have to think on your feet in Rallycross, especially at the start of the race, working out where everyone is going, and especially with the first corner joker, you have to work out if you want to dive in there or not. And you have to be committed if you are going to go in there. Here we go, final race of qualifying. Grab the handbrake. We're almost ready to race. There we go. Finally getting control of the car. We've got the two Kevins on our inside and Petter Solberg on our outside ready to race. And we are green again. Not the best start. Petter getting a much better getaway than anyone else as we're being pushed down to the inside as we're heading down in to turn number one three wide can we do this right around the outside a lot of contact there i think we might have just done that mugged off the two kevins and into the lead we saw Peter going into the joker so i had to go very hard on the brakes i was considering it myself once he was going there i had to go for the standard lap and see what i could do about the two kevins and we've done a very nice job here now he's going to get into a rhythm, get our heads down and go as fast as we bloody can. Right, we have to dive into the Joker on lap number four. It's saying we should rejoin in first place, but it was flicking with second a little bit earlier, so it could be a bit of a close rejoin. There is Petter Solberg, and we are going to come out in front of him, so we should be able to win our particular race, and hopefully our time is quick enough to win Q4. I feel like I've done a very nice job behind the wheel, saying some of the best laps that I have in the entire qualifying session so far. Only a couple of corners left, getting a nice little hand, bit of handbrake there, just to pitch the nose in and get to the apex, through the final chicane, and across the line. A 226.7, I feel like that run was good enough to win Q4. And yes, it was. It was good enough to win Q4. Petter Solberg actually being second as well. But let's just have a little bit of a look at the replay. What happened as we headed down to turn number one? We were three wide with... Oh, no, we weren't actually quite three wide. I thought we were with the two Kevins. I just sensed it. And then they tried to push up my inside. No, we weren't even really con having any contact with them. I thought we were, but it was them two rubbing on each other. We got a better start than I thought. It's really hard to tell because there's no mirror I can easily see from within the car. So I'm sort of guessing as to where everyone is coming down into turn number one. And that heat worked out very nicely for us in the end. So that brings us to the end of qualifying. And Johan Christofferson had a tough one there in Q4, a bit like we did in Q3. And that means we are actually top qualifier, but we are equal on points with Johan Christofferson with the exact same results throughout the qualifying session. But nonetheless, that means we are going to be on pole for one of the semi-finals. Here we go. Time for the semis. Now, the way this works... Time no longer matters. It is now an out-and-out -out race. Position on track is all that counts. The top three from each of the two semifinals goes into the six-car final. Now, I'm in semifinal number one. Alongside me on the front row of the grid is Penta Solberg. On the second row of the grid is Kevin Erickson and Andreas Backer. Then you've got Timmy Hansen and Yanis Balmanis on the final row of the grid. It's no longer a four abreast start. It is a two-by-two-by-two two two grid. And having a quick look at the other semifinal, you've got Christofferson and Munich 
Nick on the front row of the grid, Loeb and Gronholm, then Kevin Hansen and Tim Timizyanov. Also, I just forgot to mention with the qualifying results at the end of all the qualifying sessions, that table that you saw with me on top, Christofferson, there in second on equal points. There are championship points dished down at that point of the championship. You have um, 16 points for the top qualifier, 15 for second, and all the way down to last place getting one point. I forgot to mention that. Here we go, it is time for the semi-final. We are starting on pole position. We've gone from four cars up to six. We've also gone from four laps up to six laps. We are ready to race. And we are green in Montalegre for semi-final. Number one has not been the start that we wanted. Kevin Erickson getting a better start from the front row of the grip. We do have the ideal line down into turn number one, but I've sent it in very, very deep. I don't think anyone is on our right-hand side, and no, they are not. We have held on to the lead of this semi-final off pole position position which is exactly what we want to do and now we just need to drive the absolute boots off this DS3. Joker on the last lap again going for that same strategy. We don't want to get ourselves bogged down in any form of traffic and hopefully we can go on to win this semi-finals. I am tripping up a little bit through those last few corners. It looks like I've actually got Timmy Hansen all the way up in to second. He started on the back row of the grid and Petter Solberg. Petter Solberg just appearing on the right hand side of my screen ever so slightly as I went a little bit deep down into turn number one. This is going to get very feisty, argy bungy stuff now that we are into the business end of the event. I just realized four cars jokered there on lap number two. Only me and Peta have not gone in to the joker. I sh maybe should have actually jokered just then, trying to, to cover everyone off, knowing that I would probably still rejoin ahead of him. But the joker prediction is still saying I will come out in first place. So I think we are fine and dandy just to keep on going right now. Actually, let's just drop back to second. Okay, now we're in an interesting predicament. Timmy Hansen was well, actually just gone back to first. It's flicking between first and second. We need to ace these final few corners and get a very nice run through the joker. We're going to have to go now. Timmy Hansen is flying and we are going to have to try to cover him off into the joker. We are going to go on lap number four down into the joker getting a nice bit of rotation on the car. Just Oh no, we're coming out, we're coming out behind two cars in fact. Actually, one of them is a Petter, and then we have Timmy Hansen, who is on an absolute stormer. So we've actually lost one place overall there. Not quite how we wanted things to go, but I feel like we definitely had to Joker to try to cover off Timmy. It was worth trying. As you can see, he's already on the back of Petter. He is on an absolute mission right now. Oh, Timmy has made a big mistake coming out of the final corner. Can we capitalize? and get up his inside, Ooh, oh, okay, okay, I have sent that in way too hard, and there is Petter Solberg on the rejoin, we, maybe I shouldn't have been so aggressive with Timmy Hansen there, that might just have cost us a spot on the second row of the grid, with Petter coming in on the rejoin, I'm having a bad run here, through the dirt section, struggling to see up ahead of us, and we're not going to be close enough to try to send a move on Petter. It looks like, despite having pole position in this semi-final, we're going to come home third. Still enough to get us through to the final, but that means we're going to be starting on the final row of the grid, which is not what we want. That race, although we have qualified for the final, really did not go to plan. So here are the final results from the semi-final. Timmy Hansen taking first place in semi-final one with Solberg and myself. Eliminated from our race is Yanis Balmanis, Backward, and Kevin Erickson. In the other uh, semi-final, you got Johan Christofferson winning that with the two Peugeots of Loeb and Kevin Hansen going through. Tim Zjano of Munich and Gronholm have been eliminated. Now, it's also worth Worth noting, championship-wise, um, everyone gets points in the semi-final. Six, uh, six points for winning a semi-final. Five, four, three, two, one, all the way down to sixth place. And obviously, that goes for both semi-finals. So it is time for the final here in Montalegre, and here is the grid. Johan Christofferson is on pole position with Timmy Hansen joining him on the front row of the grid. Then you have two world rally champions on the second row of the grid, Petter Solberg and Sebastian Loeb. Then on the final row of the grid, you have myself and Kevin Hansen. Here we go, it is finals time. We are on the back row of the grid alongside Kevin Hansen. Here we go, grab the handbrake. We are ready to race. 
and we are green for the final here in Montalegre and Kevin Hansen has got an absolutely storming start as we head down towards turn number one hard on the brakes trying to get across to the apex oh we are getting forced up on the curb we've been spun almost up over the curb I don't know who quite did that and it looks like Timmy Hansen has gone for the Joker we have dropped to the back of the field except for Timmy Hansen that has gone into the, oh there's Timmy Hansen hi Timmy he's just forced us wide over the curb getting very 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 aggressive the elbows are coming out here in Montalegre and right now I think I'm going to get out of Timmy's way and go for the Joker myself get a little bit of clean air and trying to put in some lap times from where I am right now I'm not really going to do much it looks like someone is joining us in the Joker and that is Kevin Hansen who joined us on the back row of the grid and got an absolutely storming start as we send it up over the curb this is going to be a tricky final to get anything from it now that we are down into last place we just need to attach on to the back of the Hanson brothers and hope they set in some decent times we are right on the back of Kevin Hanson can we get up his inside down into turn number one yes we can and we are going to take fifth position from Kevin and now he's going to try to set our sights on his brother up the road Timmy Hansen it looks like the front three are still yet to joker but our spotter prediction is still in fifth place it's still going to be difficult to get anything from here final lap here in Montalegre the top three are all heading for the joker and we are not going to get past any of them they all come out in front of so it looks like Timmy Hansen has actually jumped all three of them and he is going to win the first round of the season by the looks of things there's still a few corners to go I don't want to call anything too early but we are definitely not getting any higher than fifth place only a couple more corners to go a little bit handbrake to get the nose in now through these final two chicanes two more corners to navigate Timmy Hansen has won as we come across the line in fifth place that final didn't quite go as we wanted. We were starting on the back row of the grid, so you really can't expect too much from there. But let's have a look at the final race results. Timmy Hansen taking the first round of the season with Johan Christofferson and Petter Solberg joining him on the podium. Sebastian Loeb in fourth place, myself in fifth, and Kevin Hansen rounding out the field in sixth. So the way the championship points work in the final, it's the same as the semi-final, except the winner actually gets two bonus points. So it's 8, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So Timmy Hansen's actually picking up eight points, five for Christofferson, and myself is picking up two points. So that brings us to the end of round number one of this brand new World RX career mode here on Dirt 4. Next up, we head to the birthplace of Rallycross Lydon Hill. I cannot wait for that one. That is quite a tricky track and a fair bit more tarmac, which should theoretically help me a little bit with my background in racing. Definitely coming from a lot more tarmac racing than dirt racing. So that should definitely be a track that suits us more than some of the others. But I guess we'll just wait and find out. I thought Montalegre, I would do pretty well here because it's one of my favorite tracks on this game. I just love driving here. But once I got in a bit of traffic, a bit of dirt in my face, especially in this DS3, I did struggle a little bit. And in the end, I couldn't quite come away with the result I was hoping Hoping for fifth place is in the final. Getting all the way through to the final is still something I will take. But nonetheless, next up we're heading to Lyndon Hill. I cannot wait for that. I hope you guys have enjoyed the first episode of this series. If you did, make sure you do leave a like on the video. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you do subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.